talk to you guys about this really cool hack that I learned when applying to PA school and I've seen some other people use it as well. I think it's kind of like a really cool way to make sure that you're doing what you need to do or you're like actually a great applicant for PA school. You and I, when I do a lie, if I well, what's up you guys? It's Adana. Welcome back to my channel. Happy New Year's, you guys. We have made it to 2019. It is here. I am so excited, you guys. We have been in this thing for over a year and a half, which is so cool. So thank you so much, you guys, for joining me on that journey. I also want to just say, like, 2018 was like amazing, you guys, you know? And 2019 is gonna be even more amazing because I'm gonna be graduating from PA school, I'm gonna be certified, I'm gonna get my first job as a PA, and you guys are gonna be getting into PA school. So that is what this video is about. Yeah, damn right! So this is my 2019 get into PA school this year hack, okay? So that is what we're gonna be talking about. For those of you that are gonna be applying this year, you really have to make sure that you're going after this whole PA school entrance um, and trying to get an interview like it's a job or like it's what you want to do with your life because it ultimately is. I made sure that I had a spreadsheet and like just put my stats up. So for you, this is my hack, you guys. You guys need to start a spreadsheet with all of your stats. So you put your stats on the spreadsheet and your stats include things that you can quantify. So I'm not talking about your personal statement or anything like that, you know. We're, we're not talking about letters of recommendation. We're talking about quantifiable things. So your GPA, your GRE score, your healthcare hours, your shadowing hours, and your patient care experience, those hours. So you're gonna put all of that on your spreadsheet and you're gonna put like a little me on top of it or next to it or however you wanna title it. And then you're going to look at the schools that you're interested in. Now, this is kind of like a PA school match, I guess you could say. Just like how, you know, residencies, you're matching into a residency and you rank your schools from you know the schools that you're really interested in to the schools that you're not so interested in but you wouldn't mind going to them you do the same thing with the PA schools that you're interested in and you're not so interested in so you're gonna rank those and put them in a list and then you're gonna look at their stats so you're gonna put up their average GPA score their average GRE score for all of the students that they've had in the past and more specifically the past year you know also put in their healthcare hours that they require um, and any other quantifiable thing that they require on that and then you're going to now rank them so you're gonna see okay so if my school requires 500 healthcare experience hours and I have 5,000 then I'm like acing that so you can put that in green like you can have it like you rank it however you want to put it. Either mark it green or rank it as like a 10 because you're superseding what they need. All right, you guys, so I have created a spreadsheet here for you all just to try to make this a little bit simpler for you to understand because I know that it's hard when I'm just talking about it and you can't really see what I'm talking about. So here I have what the five stats would be, which is your science GPA, your GRE, your healthcare experience, your shadowing experience, and your patient care experience. I have my supposed stats as a prospective student, and then I have each school's average student stats here. And so that's how you would see it going forward, my stats, and then the average student stats for that particular program. I decided to score this out of 10, and for me, if I'm meeting the actual average requirement or what they use to what their average student um, has as a science GPA, then I give myself a five. If I am above that, I give myself anything from a five above, essentially. So I would give myself a six to a 10, depending on how far above uh, the general requirement or the average requirement is. So let's take a look at Truth University. Truth University, their average student has a 3.5 GPA, a GRE score of 305, healthcare experience of 1,000 hours, shadowing experience of 20 hours, and then 1,500 hours of patient care experience. So 
when I put my stats up against Truth University stats, I have, I'm meeting their average student score. So I'm gonna give myself a five. Here, the GRE is 305 and I have a 304 GRE. Um, it's only one point lower. So again, I'm gonna give myself a five because it's pretty average. As far as healthcare experience goes, I have 2,500 hours and that particular program only requires or has an average, they allow their students have an average of a thousand hours. So I'm going to give myself an eight because I'm 1,500 hours over what their average student comes into the program with. Now, again, you guys, this is all subjective. By no means is this like the end all be all. You may have given yourself a seven um, or someone else may have given themselves a nine. But for me, I'm trying to be conservative in what I'm giving myself, but at the same time, not trying to be like too stringent on what I'm doing because I want to give myself a pretty accurate depiction on where I land with these particular programs. As far as shadowing experience goes, it's 275 hours is what I have, and then the school has an average, they, their students have an average of 20 hours. And with patient care experience, I have 500 hours, and they their students have an average of 1,500 hours. So because I'm so low, I'm giving myself a two. I'm not a five because I'm not at 1,500. I'm at 500 and I'm well below 1,500. So I'm gonna give myself a two. When you add all of that up, because again, this is out of 10, each section is out of 10. When you add all of it up, I have a 30 over 50. So here you see, like I put it in red, I highlighted it in red because I'm not really doing that well. Like to me, a 30 out of 50 is not, it's not where it's at. So let's look at Faith University. Um, Faith University, their GPA for their students that they, uh, their average student is 2.5 and I have a 3.5. So I'm like, I'm, I'm killing the game with this. I'm going to give myself a 10. Um, again, their average student has a 285 GRE and I have a 304. So again, I'm going to give myself a 10. 500 hours is what their average student enters into and I have 2,500 hours. So I gave myself a 10. Their average student has 20 hours of shadowing experience and I have 275 hours. So again, I'm giving myself a 10. And then with respect to patient care experience, the average student has 100 hours and I have 500 hours. So I'm gonna give myself a 10. So with respect to Faith University, I gave myself 10s across the board. I have a 50 out of 50. So I put that in green because it's highly likely that I would not only do well, like they're not going to just see my application and be like, let me put it off to the side. They're going to see this application and be like, oh, okay. So she is absolutely superseding all of the different um, requirements that we have. Um, let's take a second look at her. Let's look at her personal statement and possibly offer her an interview. And I told you guys that you should always rank your schools in how well you like them, like rank them from least to greatest in terms of which school you wanna to go to. So I have Faith Universities ranked, like that's my number one school that I wanna to go to. Then Movie University is next, Pathologies, after that, Truth is there. So we can put our rankings here, right? So Faith is number one, Movie is two, Pathology is three, and Truth is fourth on my list. Um, I guess I could have probably put it in the opposite order, but um, nonetheless, I already had this written down. So I wanted to put that out for you so you can just, just see exactly what I'm talking about. So I have them ranked here. So if I'm looking at my top school that I want to go to, and I'm also seeing that I'm getting a 50 out of 50 for that school, then I'm doing pretty good. Like that is a definite school that you should apply to. Here, Truth University is a two out of 10. I scored a 30, it's not too, too bad. I could probably even change this to an orange. Maybe, maybe this can be an orange school. Like, oh, you could apply to this school, you don't have to. So although it's, 
it's an orange, it's my least favorite school that I want to go to. So I would put that on the back burner when I'm thinking about schools that I actually want to apply to when and when I want to apply to them because that is also part of the game, understanding which schools to apply to, what their deadlines are, should I apply to this school first or this school second, um, and this spreadsheet will help you do that because you can see, okay, if I'm doing extremely well at Faith, I should absolutely apply to them first, especially before I apply to, let's say, a school like Truth or even Pathology. Should I even apply to the school at all? It's third on my list, but I am not doing well from for that school from their standpoint of their average students. So with respect to that, I should not apply to that school, not anytime soon. Instead, what I should do is continue to work to boost some of these hours, some of these areas where I'm lacking, like in the patient care experience hours, because again, here I have 500 hours and Pathology University requires 2,000 hours. So that is something that I can actually boost up. I can boost that up. The GPA is a little bit harder if you're trying to apply now. You don't want to necessarily spend time retaking classes. So work on things that you can raise because this one is something that's holding you way, way back. And these, this patient care experience is going to also boost your healthcare experience. So as this goes up, this will go up. But hopefully this was very... Um, just informative. Hopefully this makes more sense after seeing it here. Uh, but this is exactly what I'm talking about in putting your stats up, the school stats up, having a system on how you're going to rank yourself, um, knowing what that system is, and then putting it across the board. And then kind of putting it in color so that you can easily see, all right, I'm doing really good here. I'm doing pretty good here. Not so good here at all. And here I'm about average. Um, and then you can make your decisions on when to apply to the specific schools um, from this spreadsheet. So guys, that is my hack for 2019 to get you guys into PA school. Please go out and use it. Tell the world about it. Tell your friends about it. Everybody who wants to get into PA school in 2019, use this and tell me how it works out for you guys because I promise you it's gonna make your life so much easier when you're trying to figure out what schools to apply to and when um, and what schools I should go to or, or how I stack up on a particular school. All right, um, I hope you guys have a great new year. 2019 is gonna be amazing for us, you guys. Stay focused, stay motivated. We are gonna kill this year. I love you guys, thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!